the 1st of February 2023 and this is a meeting of the Epping Forest District Council Area Planning Subcommittee East. My name is Ian Headley, I'm the uh, Chairman of this evening. Before we start proper, I have this to read to you. This meeting is to be webcast and the Chairman will read the following announcement, which is me. I would like to remind everyone present that this hy hybrid meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or other such use by third parties. Therefore, by participating in this meeting, you are consenting to be filmed and the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. If any public speakers on Zoom do not wish to have their image captured, they should ensure that their video setting throughout the meeting is turned off and set to audio only. Please also be aware that if technical difficulties interrupt the meeting, that cannot be overcome, I may need to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Right, once again, my name is Councillor Ian Hardy, the Chairman. On my left I have Councillor Heather Brady, who is the Vice Chairman. Further left we have Laura, uh, wrong one, yeah? <laughs> who is a Democratic Services Officer. Graham Courtney on my right, who's a Planning Officer. And Natalie, who's working the bells and whistles of the lights for this evening. Okay, um, item two, advice of speakers attending the council, Laura, has that been done? Uh, yes, Chair. Thank you. Apologies for absence, item three. Uh, apologies have been received from Councillor McIver, Councillor Stalker, Councillor Morgan, Councillor Burroughs, Councillor Rolfe, and for lateness from Councillor Chris Redbread and Councillor Nigel Bedford. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Holly Whitbread. And Councillor Holly Whitbread for lateness. Okay. Two of them. Declarations of interest. Councillor Amos. Thank you, Chairman. I'm a member of the Thaden Boys Parish Council Planning Committee, and we're consulted on all the applications. But the decisions that I make are based upon the papers that I receive here tonight and the arguments that I hear. Can I also say that in respect of uh, item 11, the, the application at four, from 14 Forest Drive, I, with many others, have been a frequent attender at the Bonhomie Cafe and as such have been acquainted with the applicant, although I don't consider it to be prejudicial and I will remain and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McCready. Thank you, Chairman. Um, EPF 307620. Um, the applicant is known to me, also his agent, um, as, he's, as they're known to many people, uh, but I'm their ward councillor. Also, um, EPF 234322, one thousand place. Uh, the objectors some of them are known to me, and also the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Phillip. Uh, thank you, Chairman. On application uh, num number 12 on the agenda, 14 Forest Drive, uh, like Councillor Amos, I have frequented the cafe currently known as Bonhomie and previously known as Belgique on a number of occasions, but the interest is not prejudicial. Thank you. And Councillor <laughs> yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I'm item number 10. I also know a number of the objectors, but it's not a prejudicial interest, so I shall stay. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Chairman Whitehouse? Thanks, Tony. Yes, with regard to number 10, um, I know one of the objectors. Okay. I've received written <coughs> declaration of interest from Councillor Chris Whitbread in relation to item number 10, EPF 2343-22, one third in place. Um, the applicant is known to him and he will be leaving the chamber during that discussion. Okay, thank you. Councillor um, Brady. Sorry, on item nine, um, the applicant is known to me but only in a very distant way and is non-prejudicial. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Minutes for the last meeting. Any comments at all? 
you're happy for me to sign them. Thank you. Any other business? Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Next item, uh, item seven, planning policy briefing note. Noted, everybody? Thank you. Site visits, any site visits? No site visits, thank you. Okay, our first planning application is EPF 1323-22, Coopercell Hall Farm, Unit 10, Fluxes Lane, Epping, CM 167PE. Um, this was subject to a site visit on Saturday, and thank you for all of those who have turned up for this visit. Um, I think I've passed this over to James. Graham. Graham. <laughs> <laughs> so you were joking before, no? You're doing it. <laughs> Evening, members. Thank you, Chairman. So this application is for the conversion of an office building and gym to a dwelling for a site manager and workers on the commercial site. The application was deferred from the last committee so that a site visit could take place. Uh, the application is recommended for refusal, however has been called in by Councillor McCready. Uh, no objections have been received on this. The site is situated within uh, a designated employment site uh, and within the Greenbelt. The existing building is an office and gym used by workers on the site. Uh, it is situated at the entrance to the site uh, with parking to the front, as can be seen here. To the rear of the site is the uh, residential garden of two Coopersau Hall Farm Cottage, which is uh, in the ownership of the applicant uh, and in also included within the designated employment site. This shows the extent of the uh, applicant's ownership. Uh, it is worth noting that the indicative plan within the agenda shows the application site as larger than it is. Uh, as can be seen, the intention is to uh, acquire some of the existing amenity space of two Cooper uh, Sow Hall Farm Cottage uh, for use by the dwelling. The proposal would utilise an existing building with no enlargements and there is no concern in terms of impact on the Greenbelt. Uh, one of the key concerns is the loss of employment use within the designated employment site. Uh, policy E1 of the submission version local plan makes it clear that uh, the redevelopment of existing sites or premises or their change of use uh, or their change of use other than business, general industry or warehousing will not be permitted. Although it is argued that the dwelling would be occupied only by a site manager and employees of the site and therefore is akin to an ancillary use, no, rub uh, no robust evidence has been provided with regards to the need for the dwelling, particularly since the applicant owns the adjacent house. Whilst the applicant has suggested that the occupation could be conditioned similar to an agricultural worker's dwelling, it is not considered that the requirements of policy E1 have been met. Alongside the concerns regarding loss of employment, uh, there are concerns regarding amenity. Uh, there are a number of existing windows facing the garden of two Coopersau Hall Farm Cottage, which can be seen here. Uh, and whilst these already cause some overlooking, uh, these windows would serve bedrooms uh, and therefore would increase overlooking both to the adjacent garden and into the proposed bedrooms. Um, furthermore, the... Uh, the amenity space uh, that's proposed to be carved from the adjacent garden would be limited in size and overlooked by the rear windows of two Coopersau Hall Farm Cottage. As such, this would be detrimental to future occupants. Lastly, due to the lack of a completed legal agreement, the council is unable to secure suitable mitigation measures against harm to the Epping Forest Special Area of Conservation. Uh, so that is another suggested reason for refusal. So this application follows a very similar recent proposal uh, that was refused in November 2021 for the same reasons suggested here. Uh, this is the plan of the previous 
refusal. Uh, since the previous reasons for refusal have not been overcome, the application is again recommended for a refusal. Back to you, members. Thank you, Greg. Okay, first we have a speaker, uh, Mr. Paul Saggers, who's the applicant. <coughs> Can you have three minutes, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. Um, just a, a quick point of clarification regarding that presentation. Um, the adjacent dwelling, which is owned by the garage owner, uh, wouldn't provide any accommodation for any of his staff. Um, and just because that house exists there, um, it's not a reason for not proceeding with this intended application. Okay, I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant and PMW garage owner, Peter Schuberg. Peter lives next door to the application site and has owned and worked here for 40 years. He has built up a thriving garage business, directly employing eight people, along with numerous other subcontractor employees. This type of business needs sought after professional qualified staff, and many are willing to commute a distance to work. However, recruiting staff and retaining staff is difficult. Peter has an adjoining unoccupied office next to the garage, which has been vacant and not able to be let for a number of years. Due to the remote location from Epping Town Centre, it is doubtful that the offices will ever be let. This application seeks to repurpose the offices into staff accommodation for existing employees, two of which have a daily commute from Suffolk. The overnight accommodation would make the business more attractive and recruiting and retaining staff would be made easier. This application is by no means a backdoor approach to achieve a dwelling, particularly as this is an employment zone with a commercial character which does not lend itself to peaceful living. The staff accommodation would very much complement the existing business and the applicant would be very willing to restrict the accommodation use solely in connection with the business under a 106 type legal agreement or similar, uh, such as you would get with tied agricultural accommodation. Um, I hope that uh, you'll see the merits of this scheme uh, to ensure the business thrives going forward uh, with the required staff that they need. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, members. Um, Lord Councillor, Councillor McCready. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I have called in this application, but just to reassure the committee that I have not predetermined my opinion on my vote I will be listening to the debate. I have met the applicant and have visited the site in my capacity as the applicant's ward councillor. I have read the officer's report and listened to the applicant. I am struck by the fact this application is a bona fide request to add something to a successful local business and not an attempt by a developer to land grab. It would be useful for the business to have a manager living on site for, amongst other things, security. This is a remote site, bordered by the golf course and various fields, and security is an issue. I think we should be supporting this local business as for the comment, oh sorry, I have written my notes because when you get to my age you need to have notes. I think we should be supporting this local business. As for the comment that other residential accommodation is available nearby, it's flawed, given the underlying reason for the application, which is to provide accommodation in this remote site for a manager on site for security purposes and to take over the reins of running the business from the applicant. Regarding the sack, surely this would apply to every application in Epping, so I don't really see that it applies, should apply here. Regarding overlooking, the neighbours are actually known to me and they've not mentioned any concerns. And for these reasons, 
uh, I am undecided as to whether I will be supporting the officer's recommendation to refuse. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Councillor Janet Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'm also one of the board councillors. I went on the site visit, which was very helpful. It's not really surprising that um, residents haven't um, responded to the, uh, the application because it's so remote from other, other neighbours that they're really not going to be affected at all. Um, I uh, feel that this is, this is uh, against policy. It is a, an employment site. I would like to know more about how it has been advertised because we are very short of employment sites and um, it's to me it's, it's um, special circumstances are not sufficient to, to overcome the objection um, if it's is that necessary to recruit people from as far away as Suffolk to uh, to do this particular specialist role but there are alternatives if he had, needs to stay overnight many people who work in in one place far from home have to stay away at bed and breakfast or stay in a hotel or something if it's really necessary. So there are alternatives. And I just don't think that the premises are really suitable for um, residential. It's very much impinging on the garden, whereas the applicant may not mind that if the house moves down to our ownership. It's really not, not suitable. Um, so, uh, and, and also there are also other alternatives to providing security apart from having someone staying on there. So. Much as I would like to support a local business, I don't really feel that, that I can port, support this application to turn a, a work unit into a, a residential dwelling. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Philip. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I'm, I'm very much in support of uh, local businesses. I think they do a, a wonderful job and it's great to have them. That said, I think uh, Councillor Whitehouse has hit the nub of a number of issues here. Uh, this is clearly against policy. It hasn't followed the necessary steps to show that it's no longer necessary to have as an employment site. We've got a submission version of the local plan that's been uh, through examination in public. It's been through main modifications twice. Um, it is very close to coming back to us for uh, adoption. There's not been any issues raised over uh, this employment site by the inspector, so he is happy that it's an employment site. Given that, we need to make sure that we protect it as one of the things that our local plan is in place to do, which is to put uh, the dwellings where we want them, but to protect the employment sites where we want them and where we have them. Um, so that, I think that really addresses uh, the refusal reason number one, which I think is perfectly correct. Uh, I agree also with Councillor Whitehouse around uh, number two. Uh, you can't just make decisions on the basis of who's occupying a property at a particular time. You have to look at it at, in terms of the future and in terms of who owns a business and whether that business could change hands, as all businesses can do. So I think number two is also a valid reason for refusal. Uh, unlike Councillor McCready, I think uh, reason three, the absence of section 106, is perfectly pertinent here. It would have been quite possible to have a draft, at least a draft section 106 agreed between the applicant and the planning authority before it came to committee, particularly given that this is the second time it's come back to committee because it's been delayed for a month because of uh, the site visit. Uh, we have an obligation to protect the special area of conservation. That requires us to get section 106s in place to do that work. We do not have one. That alone has been sufficient reason for inspectors to refuse appeals simply because that's not there. Much as I want to support a local business, I cannot see any way that we should be supporting this application as it currently stands. And as such, I will be supporting the officer's recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Bell. Um, likewise, I would like to support local business. It's a very important business there. But I would view this as um, not the highest quality of housing. I would assume I don't like mixing housing <coughs> with business. And I don't like mixing a very successful, busy car business with um, 
what would be rather low quality housing because of the amenity spaces both to the front and the rear. I just don't feel they're acceptable in terms of normal housing. They may be acceptable to one person who might work on the site tomorrow, but then in another few years' time, I feel they might not be. So on, on those grounds, it, it, I don't think it's good planning. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else wish to speak? Oh, oh yes, right. Um, Nigel Avery, I think you're speaking on behalf of yourself. I think that's right, Chairman. <laughs> no, this... I hope so. That sounds a bit strange. I am, I am, this is in my ward as a town councillor. I am chair of Epping Town Council's Planning Committee and we didn't object to this application, but I would like to support it um, because I think you're looking at it through the wrong optic here. Um, this means you will be, if you, ref if you take the view that you go against the officer's recommendations, you will be supporting a local business. To say you all support local business, well, a local business has made this application to assist it to continue. Um, we are not dealing here with a crafty developer who wants to exploit land to build multiple dwellings. The local business needs help for the sake of the future of that business. Um, and I think if you are going to support local businesses, this is a good candidate for you to support. It is a very successful car business, repair business. And I think unless you, they get this support, you will put the business in jeopardy because it's an isolated site with security problems. The applicant is growing older and doesn't want to get up at three o'clock in the morning every time the security lights go on because someone's potentially stealing cars or materials from the workshop. Um, so I would urge you not to support the planning officer's recommendations in this case. And if, if the committee is finding difficulty, and clearly some members are, with this application, the suggestion would be the use of a condition, which means the accommodation is tied to the business and any other use or sale as a separate dwelling would require planning permission and that would seem to me to be one way of curing the difficulty yet supporting this business which does require your help. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Phillips. Uh, thank you. I need to come back because it's a contribution from outside the committee. Unfortunately, I believe Councillor Evie has badly misjudged what this committee does. We need to look at these things on planning reasons not on economic development reasons uh, and for the reasons I'd laid out which were all sound planning ones rather than uh, a, a plea to support a local business. You can support local businesses. I do support local businesses but I do not support them where they go against good planning reasons. So to do what Councillor Avey says, as Councillor Avey well knows, conditions to restrict the use of a house have frequently in this district mm -hmm been ridden roughshod over. We have seen them being sold separately, even when they're ancillary. It's not as great a protection as we might like to say. And I come back to the reason three in the report, which is a lack of section 106. We have to present, present a proper approach to the SAC. We haven't got that here. That alone would be enough reason to refuse this. Thank you. Anybody else like to say anything? Yes? That's the White House, Chair of the White House. Chairman, just before we move to voting, in the uh, number one refusal reason, line three, there's a not there, there shouldn't be there. It makes nonsense of what is trying to be said. Insufficient, robust evidence has not been advanced. It just cancels it out. Yeah, no, 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 you are correct, sorry, just reading that, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I think, okay, I mean, we, obviously, if, depending on what the, how the vote goes, you can delegate the slight change of wording uh, of that, because we, we know what it's supposed to say, we can uh, amend that wording so it makes sense, <laughs> uh, depending on how the vote goes.
Okay, then I think we're ready to vote. Um, those in favour of the officer's recommendation to refuse, please raise your hands now. Six, Chair. Those against? Three, Chair. Those abstaining? Sorry, Councillor Bedford, you missed part of the conversation. Your vote isn't valid. Okay, sorry. Uh, three, four. Okay, so that means the application has been refused. Thank you. Okay, the next item. Item 10, which is a planning application, EPF 2343-22. One Thaden Place FMCM 164 NH, um, which again uh, the recommendation is to grant. Graham, I think you'll go first. Yep. Thank you, Chairman. So this is a uh, retrospective application for amendments to a previously approved scheme reference EPF slash 3219 slash 17. Uh, the alterations include the relocation of uh, the internal garage, a change to windows, the relocation of the flank wall uh, 0.9 metres from the boundary, the provision of additional roof lights uh, and the construction of a small parapet wall. The application is before committee since there is an objection from the town council uh, and six neighbours, one of which from Two Faden Place is not uh, in the committee report. Uh, we've also received seven letters of support, uh, three of which were received after the report was written. Uh, these additional three were from 55 and 65 Hemnall Street and Two Lower Berry Lane. The application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. While still under construction, uh, this shows the dwelling as currently built uh, and being applied for. These show the property um, up here, along with the adjacent neighbour uh, at 2 Faden Place uh, that is uh, similar in design. This slightly dark picture um, shows the rear elevation uh, as built. So this is the previously approved scheme. Uh, this uh, included raising the ridge and adding rooms to the roof space. Uh, as can be seen, there's also first floor windows uh, and roof lights added, or well, approved. So this shows the proposed plans. Uh, I'll just point out some of the key amendments uh, are the relocation of the garage from location here to over here. Uh, the reduction in the side addition providing a 900 millimetre gap uh, from this shared boundary. Uh, the enlargement of the front and rear windows uh, and some additional roof lights uh, within the um, within the roof uh, obviously uh, and a small parapet wall has also been added uh, along the side, which is just, yeah. So the dwelling would be a three bed property uh, and is uh, actually smaller than the previously approved scheme uh, due to uh, this setback that can be seen here. The bulk and scale of the dwelling is uh, relatively unchanged from the previous approval uh, and the stepping off the boundary uh, would in fact reduce the scale uh, and have a uh, positive impact on the adjacent neighbour. The proposed roof lights are all high level of 1.7 metres or above uh, floor level, uh, as can be seen here. This would ensure that they cause no overlooking. A BRE daylight and sunlight assessment has been submitted, showing uh, that the development is acceptable with regards to any loss of light to neighbours. The enlarged front and rear windows overlook the street and front garden uh, and the rear garden and bell common open space and therefore cause no loss of privacy. 
As previously seen, uh, number two, Faden Place, had uh, an approval uh, and has built this out similar to um, the proposal. Uh, this is the approval at number two. So this shows the um, comparison between the previous uh, approval and this application. Uh, so the amendments to the scheme are considered to be acceptable uh, and actually may be viewed as an improvement over the previously approved scheme. Uh, the enlarged front and rear windows are in character with the adjacent dwelling and do not cause any visual harm to the street scene or the surrounding area. Roof lights are a common feature within the road, uh, as is the use of uh, different external materials uh, as proposed. Therefore, the proposal is considered to be acceptable and the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Uh, it is, however, suggested that an additional condition be added uh, removing permitted development rights for further roof extensions and alterations, uh, which was in the previous consent uh, and should be repeated here, but uh, isn't in the agenda. Back to you, members. Thank you, Graham. Um, we have a speaker here, um, Mr. Curtis Jacoby. Thank you. Three minutes. Uh, good evening, Chairman and Councillors. Uh, my name is Curtis Jacoby, and I represent the seven neighbours who have objected in writing to this retrospective planning application for one thing place. You've all been circulated with the individual objections to this completed building, including lack of privacy, restricted daylight and overbearing presence, all of which con contravene the policy DBE9 of the local plan. Mr. Saggers was forced into making this new application after his new neighbours alerted the planning department in October last year of the numerous breaches to the 2017 approved plans. Not one single neighbour objected to the 2017 plans. However, the changes Mr. Saggers now refers to as minor have had a major impact on his immediate neighbours and have therefore come to the attention of this committee. This part of Thaden Place was built as bungalows. Accordingly, each neighbour enjoyed complete privacy in their own homes and gardens. This is now no longer the case. Our complaint of lack of privacy is due to the new oversized first floor windows. The 2017 approval was for a 90 centimetre wide first floor rear window, giving a narrow field of view over number one's own rear garden. The new application is for the already installed 2.6 metre wide window, which gives an unrestricted field of view over the previously unoverlooked gardens to either side. The addition of the parapet has added 60 centimetres to the height of side walls and 40 centimetres to the height of the flat roof extension. These changes, combined with the new chimney towering over the adjoining gardens and the large windows, are out of proportion with the neighbouring properties. Moreover, because the new building has not been built to plan, Mr Sagger's BRE daylight calculations appear incorrect. The south flank wall is now considerably taller and closer to the boundary with number two Thaden Place. Therefore, the new building fails the 25 degree LPA planning guidelines and consequently does restrict its neighbour's daylight. As you know, this is no longer a paper exercise. The house is already built. Committee members and the planning department are invited to visit our neighbouring properties to ascertain the negative impacts for themselves before acquiescing to the planning department's recommendation against the wishes of the town council, the Epping Society and seven neighbours. We respectfully ask the committee to require the applicant to remove the offending changes that have so impacted our quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jacoby. Uh, now we have um, Councillor Avey, Epping Town Council. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the Town Council, in this case, um, didn't feel able, without the assistance of advice from planning officers, to disentangle the concerns of residents from those which were included in the original application and those which fell outside. And in the latter case, were those material and lighters of objections from residents. So in fairness to those residents, the Town Council believed the application should be referred to this committee who would have the benefit of planning officers' input. Therefore, we made a technical objection. 
to the application. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have um, Mr. Saggers again, the applicant. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Chairman, and good evening again, Members. Our project at One Thaden Place follows planning permission granted in 2018. The development has been built in accordance with the approved design as confirmed by the planning officer. Some minor changes to the appearance of the property have been made during the build. I made the changes ensuring compliance with EFDC planning policy. This application seeks to regularise the changes, which are as follows front and rear facing first floor windows. Planning approval is granted for front and rear first floor windows. During the build, we decided to enlarge the windows to increase the level of natural light entering the first floor bedrooms where they are situated. The front facing window is situated behind tall trees in our garden. Our neighbor has a similar size front facing window. The design of our windows is in accordance with the Essex design guide regarding orientation and separation from neighbours. The planning officer confirms they are not detrimental to amenity and are not out of character within Thaden Place. Point two, parapet gutter instead of eaves facing two, Thaden Place. Our side wall facing two, Thaden Place is set off the boundary by approximately 350 millimetres. My concern is future access and maintenance of the eaves and gutter. We have changed the design to a low parapet gutter to satisfy ourselves that the parapet gutter will not affect the daylight or sunlight received by our neighbours. We have commissioned a specialist daylight assessment. This concludes the impact of the parapet gutter in daylight and sunlight terms is well within BRE guidelines and therefore acceptable. Point three, roof lights. Additional VLUX roof lights have been installed to non-habitable rooms. Roof lights are permitted development. The sill heights of the roof lights are around two metres from floor level. No overlooking exists. The only outlook is toward the sky. Next point, chimney. We have constructed a chimney in matching brickwork for a log burning fire. Chimneys are permitted development. The height of the chimney is in accordance with the building regulations. Chimneys are mentioned in the Bell Common Conservation Area Character Appraisal as making an important visual contribution. Next point, garage. We did not want our neighbours to be subjected to noise associated with garage use and have therefore relocated the garage to the other side of the property away from all dwellings. Northeast side elevation wall. This wall was approved to be built up to the boundary. We have considered a side access desirable and this elevation is now offset from the boundary by approximately one metre. Front porch. A front porch was approved. We have decided not to build the front porch and instead the space in front of the entrance door into the property has been left open. These changes we firmly believe are acceptable and in keeping with the character and appearance of the property and wider street scene and we hope members will follow the recommendation of the professional planning officer and approve this application. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Members, do we have Janet Whitehouse? Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application was presented to us by the officer as if it's a new application, and I think insufficient um, reference has been made to the fact it is retrospective. The um, previous application was for a loft conversion, including raising the height of the dwelling and a single story extension to sides and rear. What we've actually got is demolition of the existing property and a complete rebuild. I was amazed when I went down the cul-de-sac some years ago to find that the, thing, the place had been demolished. That's utterly different to what it sounds like in that description of what the previous application was. And I'm not going to into the detail of all the different bits and pieces that have changed. There's eight things listed on page 34 that have changed. I'd be interested to know from the officer which of those, if any, our permitted development. But I think the, we're getting more and more of retrospective um, applications, and I think people are just beginning to think that no matter that we've spent a long time discussing an application, the conditions, and coming to a careful decision, that they can just do whatever they want. Mr. Saggers mentions in his, what he said just now that you know, he has made changes. Um, 
He advises other residents on planning applications. He must be well aware that if you want to make changes to an existing application, the route is to come to council and ask for approval. But he hasn't done that. He must have known the changes he wanted to make to completely demolish the existing building and build it as he has. And I just think there's a big principle here that if we keep on ignoring the importance of retrospective applications, it's just going to get worse and worse in the district. So I would be opposing this. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor McCready. Thank you, Chairman. Um, retrospective application, uh, need I say more? Sometimes this is done through naivety and lack of knowledge of the planning procedure. I'm not sure that this is the case in this situation. It is my understanding that the building works continued after the meeting of Epping Town Council's Planning and General Purposes Committee. I believe that the officer's report says that there is no demonstrable harm to the living conditions of neighbours. I'm sure we've all received letters of objection from the neighbours. These, I don't believe, should be dismissed. In conclusion, we have a construction that has been built without consent and continues to be built without consent and several upset neighbours. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Janet Whitehouse again. Chairman, I forgot what I was speaking to say about the number of people who have uh, written in to uh, support the application. Many of those people live far from the site and they're not going to be affected at all by the build. Okay, thank you. Um, can, Councillor Brady. Yeah. Can I just ask the planning officer to put up the pictures again, please? Of, <clears throat> I think it was of what it looks like now and what a neighbour's property looks like. Just so remind us. It was a little while ago we looked at it. Thank you. Sorry. And, and sorry, also, if you, you're very familiar, could you point out what exactly is, which is which to us? <laughs> uh, yep, sure, sure. So uh, this top one here, uh, this is the application site. Right. This is the proposal uh, that we're considering. Uh, this bit of roof here, uh, that's the application site. Uh, this one here is the neighbour uh, number two, uh, and similarly, this is the neighbour number two. Um, so, yeah, this one and this one are the application sites, and these are the neighbours. No, no, no. Councillor. Thank you, Chairman. I, I won't rehash what's been said before about retrospective applications, and particularly retrospective applications. Uh, by people who should know better. Um, it's really disappointing to see this come in front of us. Um, it's very useful actually seeing the pictures that Councillor Brady has asked to put up because it shows quite how much larger number one is than num the one next to it, if you, if you look at the scales. Um, it's also the fact that number one is further down the road than the others. I really struggle to accept the uh, planning officer's recommendations on this one, but I also struggle to see what, in purely planning terms, that we can uh, give an, a reason for refusal on this. It's the bits that have been done in as a whole would probably, in my view, have been sufficient when we first considered it to say this is not something that we're willing to support. But in terms of changes from a retrospective point of view, it's difficult taking each one of them individually to say that e that one is one that uh, makes a significant problem. However, as a whole, I think this is a significant uh, change, not just a minor change to um, where, where we were, and it's retrospective, and as such, there is absolutely no way that I can support this. Council, that's the yeah, thank you very much. Can I just ask the officer, obviously with the new house that's now built, could we have a idea please of the original height compared to the new height? Um, as in, do we know the exact difference between the two? Uh, I don't, I can find that out, but I think what's 
has to be considered here is that there is no increase in height with this proposal to what was previously approved. So Councillor Phillips' point about the, the size and, uh, and, and visually how, how, how much larger this one is uh, to the neighbour, that's been approved. There's, there's no, this doesn't increase that size. So I can, I can find those figures out for you, but it, it technically doesn't make a difference. And like Councillor Phillips said, it's, we do have to look at what the changes are between this and the previous approval. If I could just come back in, Chairman, the, the point yeah. I was making in terms of size is when you look at the size of the windows on the front of the house, they are sized to be the size of the new bigger house compared to the size of the windows on the smaller house. So there is a difference in scale, so you do get a bigger window in a bigger house if it looks the same size. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers? Uh, uh, Could I just ask, did this previous application come to committee or was it a delegated one? It did come to committee, did it? Oh, I don't remember it. Uh, oh, oh, he's on, sorry. Um, I, I'm not too sure, but I will, I will check that for you. Oh, it did come to committee. Oh, there you go. I don't need to check. Uh, yes, it did come to committee previously. Okay, do we have anybody else? Okay, so we come to a vote now. Those in favour of supporting the officer's recommendation to approve, please raise your hands. Two, Chair. Those against? Ten, Chair. Those abstaining? One, Chair. <coughs> okay, that means um, I would like somebody to call the motion to go against the uh, officer's recommendation. And Mr. Phil, the Councillor Philip. Thank you, that? Chairman. I, I'll give it a, a go. Um, on, on the basis that the cumulative effect of all the changes to the, uh, the approved planning application increase the impact on the immunity of the area and as such are an inappropriate development for this particular property. Okay, thank you. Uh, seconder, please. Councillor Janet Whitehouse. I also want to say, <coughs> is it possible to put in the, <coughs> the refusal, and it's not exactly a planning ground, but the fact that it, it is um, retrospective and that the, the procedure wasn't followed? No? Yes, what a shame. Oh. Chairman, can I, can, I, can I caution the committee against doing that? Uh, we, the, the views of retrospective applications on this committee is well known. However, we're obligated under the planning r rules to treat it as mm -hmm. an individual application and ignore the fact it's retrospective. Uh, the applicant is here. I'm sure he's heard what's been said. Yeah. Thank you. That's correct. Okay, so we have a, four, a new motion, which is to... Uh, go against the officer's recommendation to grant. So we vote now. Those in favour of the motion with conditions. No conditions. No. Those in favour of refusing. Ten, Chairman. Those against? One chairman. And those abstaining? Two chairman. Okay, so item 10 then for one paid in place has been refused. Okay, item 11 is uh, planning application for EPF 2559-22, 38 Forest Drive, Thalen Boys, in CM 167EZ. And Suki is going to take us through that. Are you there? Thank you, Chairman. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, Do you just want to yes. let the chamber clear for the noise? I didn't hear you. Sorry, can you just repeat that? I just missed that. 
can just hold it a second while the gallery is clearing itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Right. This okay. application Go seeks ahead. retrospective. Sorry, Chuck. Should I continue? Yes, please continue. Thank you. Sorry. Um, this application seeks retrospective permission for alterations to the approved boundary wall at 38 Forest Drive in Thaden Boys. The proposal site comprises a detached bungalow on the eastern side of the street. The application property is situated within a group of similar, seven similar bungalows. The wider street is characterized by two-story dwellings. This slide shows the hedge which was removed as a result of planning approval under reference EPF 1112 of 19, which allowed extensions to the bungalow. This slide shows the site layout of both the approved and application scheme. That permission allowed for a brick wall to replace the hedge. The wall had a height of 82 centimetres, rising to 1.35 metres at the top of the piers. These piers are set around 3.4 metres apart. The plans and condition four of that permission required that the front boundary treatment wall, so it should be so there should be a 1.4 meter green hedge and condition five required that permission prevented the installation of railings above this brick wall. This slide shows the elevations of both the approved and application scheme. The applicant has installed a front boundary treatment which includes brick piers that have a maximum height of 1.5 1.45 meters, a 1.35 meter high gate made up of simple black painted railings. The brick wall is inset between the piers and has been reduced in height to between 41 centimeters and 61 centimeters and is now topped with simple black painted railings, resulting in this element having a maximum total height of 1.42 meters. So this application has been um, brought to this committee as um, Thaden Boys Parish Council raised an objection and confirmed that they were willing to speak at committee. This slide shows a Google image of the development as built. As you can see, the piers installed at 40 Forest Drive are just slightly higher. In order to restrict the use of railings, it must be demonstrated that the restriction is necessary and relevant. The site is located within the built up area of Thaden Boys. It also has no heritage designation. This slide shows other examples of similar front boundary treatment close by. 84 Forest Drive has had permission for, sorry, uh, railings a gate wall which have an average height of 1.45 meters however due to the drop in land levels from west to the east of the site the maximum height of this front boundary treatment is about 1.52 meters 42 forest drive also has had permission for 1.5 meter high brick wall with railings and a 1.6 meter high gate under reference epf 512 of 17. Further examples include one Dukes Avenue and the Heights Forest Drive. It's for these reasons considered that a subject to the planting of a suitable hedge, the front boundary treatment as built will have a neutral impact on the local distinctiveness of this part of Forest Drive. And therefore this application has an officer recommendation for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Sergey. Um, okay, we have a um, speaker here, which is Councillor Peter Goop from Thane Boys Parish Council. Peter, three minutes, please. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, uh, members. Um, I'm rather encouraged by the previous conversations regarding respective uh, applications, because this is another one. The first point I was going to make, actually, is the fact that this is a blatant breach 
of a planning condition. Um, and I wonder if this is approved, what message that sends out. We're seeing, I think as we previously mentioned earlier discussion, we're seeing so many of these now. Um, and I under, I'm informed that enforcement uh, is swamped with a, number, with a number of enforcement cases. If the applicant doesn't like the conditions, he has the right, of course, to go to appeal. Um, and that's the way it should happen, rather than just carry on, build uh, as he wishes, and then hope to get retrospective planning application. I think, I think it's, it's just wrong. The second point is actually the context of these railings uh, within Forest Drive. <clears throat> I'd just like to correct the planning officer, actually. She said that number 42 had railings. It doesn't. 42 is, the, is one of these six cohesive group of bungalows which have got a particular character. We've even got a planning inspector's report talking about these six bungalows being particularly, adding particular uh, um, quality and interest to the scene. So I think the fact that she talks about number 84 is right down the end of the road. It's three or four minute walk down to the end, completely different uh, circumstances and not uh, uh, comparable. 42 actually did want to initially put drillings, it was objected to, and the planning officer uh, put conditions. So the very same conditions which were put on number 38 were placed on number 42. It is a cohesive group of bungalows with the character, and we, we feel that that ought to be treated as a, uh, a special, um, uh, as I say, a cohesive, um, cohesive group. Um, if you are minded to uh, support this, um, it is absolutely essential that uh, the planning officer's recommendation uh, for a hedge is actually supported and, and, and enforced. I think the applicant at the moment has got sort of bay trees. I understand um, what would what would be needed should you be minded to support it is some sort of a privet hedge which actually grows into the fence which will actually camouflage it. At the moment, as you saw the pictures, it's very dominant and he's out of character with this particular six cohesive group of bungalows which have a particular character. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so, Councillor, is that Councillor Amos? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just want to endorse what uh, Councillor Gooch uh, has said. Uh, we've heard a lot this evening about retrospective uh, planning applications, and I won't rehearse this again, but it is disappointing when an applicant carries on in a cavalier manner, ignoring uh, the conditions that have been imposed and then seeks to overturn it by a retrospective uh, planning application. Uh, Councillor Gooch has made reference to the possibility of a hedge being planted behind the, uh, behind the railings. I, I wouldn't uh, object to this if this is what the uh, committee wishes to do. Uh, presently, there are just two bay trees. They're not, uh, they're not at all uh, significant. And it would really need some proper hedge planting um, and they need to change the, the surface that they've got there at the moment in order to be able to do this. Um, so at the moment, I am inclined to not support this because of what has been said earlier about retrospective uh, planning applications. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Philip. Thank you, Chairman. Um, these six bungalows have had quite a long uh, planning history amongst them on this committee. It's, I remember one of them being one of the first uh, applications I spoke on when I joined the council. Uh, and I also remember uh, we've had at this committee discussions about the boundary treatment of another of these bungalows in terms of, again, somebody not building to what was uh, in the planning application. Um, and we actually agreed as a committee to reduce the size of that and bring it back to what was um, approved. Um, I, I'm very clear about this, that I, I completely disagree with the planning officer's recommendation on this one. I think it 
fascinating that the examples that she was using are down at the far end of Forest Drive, where the boundary between rural and uh, the built-up area are different. Uh, the, we use, she also used uh, Dukes Avenue, where the structure is completely different. The Heights, which is a set of flats down in amongst the shops, that is a completely different area as well. Um, Councillor Gooch referred to the cohesion of this set of bungalows. I think that is a very, very important thing. Uh, and as such, I can't see any good reason uh, to approve this retrospective application. And I'll go further than that. Given that the original application required the presence of a hedge, given that has been avoided completely throughout, even when enforcement has been there, there's no indication that that's something that they're likely to do. Uh, I would have real worries that that would be a condition that would be just ignored again. I think given where we are on this one, Chairman, the right answer is to <coughs> refuse permission for the uh, application on the grounds of uh, design, uh, of grounds of visual amenity and uh, fitting in with the street scene. Um, well, my view is that uh, having had a conversation with the planning officer about this in depth, really, that um, if a hedge is grown there, which the condition, this planning application is conditioned for that hedge, and I'm reassured that they will absolutely make sure that there is a hedge there. And as far as I can see if there is a hedge there, you really won't see the railings quite so much. The railings will not stand out if there is a hedge. Um, so if the hedge can be properly enforced and make sure that it is there, then I don't think it will have quite such an impact, but it's up to you. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Bedford. Uh, could the officer comment, please, the uh, use of the sliding gate there, would that not restrict the ability to put a uh, hedge in along the rear of the railings and you can't put it on the public footpath side? So I wasn't sure if, uh, if Suki was going <coughs> to come in on that one. Um, well, the, the, the submitted plan um, that does show the hedge is, uh, obviously does incorporate the, the sliding the sliding gate, uh, obviously, um, the, the inclusion of that sliding gate would mean that the, uh, the hedge would have to be stepped away from the, 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 the boundary slightly. Um, so it certainly wouldn't, uh, I think it was uh, Councillor Gooch who suggested about it, growing through the, the railings. Obviously, it wouldn't be able to grow through the railings uh, because of that, because every time <laughs> the, the gate opens, it would sever that hedge. Um, so, so it, it, but it would obviously give the backdrop of the railings. That's, um, yeah, that's the purpose, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Bedford again. Yeah, so, uh, um, sorry, Mr Courtney. Uh, so what we are saying is that they actually have to set the hedge back further than where it is now to allow the gate to open. Otherwise, this would turn into like a Thunderbirds project with the gate opening along with the hedge. Uh, well, I mean, uh, you say... Um, set back further than the hedges. There is no hedge there at the moment. Obviously, that's something that well, we would seek. Uh, obviously, if this is refused, we would still be seeking to enforce against that. Uh, it is still uh, contrary to that condition, uh, in breach of that condition. Um, so just, just bear that in mind, that the hedge is still subject to investigation. Um, but yeah, so I've just... Oh, I'm not sure why... I'm not sure why this isn't showing up on there. Uh, Okay, we've lost, we've lost something. Um, and the reason Suki didn't come in is because she can't hear anything at the moment, so I'm not sure. Uh, okay, yeah, so I can't show you the plan. Um, uh, but, but yeah, essentially we are talking, I mean, we're talking the width required for that sliding gate. We're not, we're not, talk, you know, we're not talking a metre or anything like that. Uh, but yes, there would be a, have to be a gap. Oh. Thank you. Can I suppose again? Sorry, what, so the, the officer's recommendation is approved with a condition that a hedge is put in? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we are, we're adamant that that hedge should go in. In fairness, 
We're adamant that head should go in regardless of the decision made today because there is a condition on the previous approval that they're in breach of, so we would enforce against that. Obviously, if we approve this, we would put the similar condition on and we would ensure that that is done. So either way, we want to hedge. <laughs> Councillor Janet Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. Can I ask the opposite? Has that particular gate been part of the approval that's been given? Because um, there are other kinds of gates that will open electronically. So I'm just wondering whether that's something he just put in or whether we have to specifically approve that sort of gate. Actually, that's a very good question. Um, and actually, just looking at the... I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to, to share the screen, but just uh, looking at the plan uh, of the previous, uh, it does appear that was a sliding gate as well. It was a five-bar style gate, um, but obviously it, was, uh, it looks like it was a sliding gate. So actually, the situation would have been exactly the same as what we've got here, uh, with the hedge slightly set back, and then a sliding gate will be a, a slightly more traditional appearing gate than what they're now proposing. I just want to uh, draw attention to the condition about the hedge. The time scale is six months from the day, date that we make a decision. I hope that will be enforced six months to make those alterations, including potentially to the gate. Presumably there is concrete on the other side of the um, of the uh, fencing. I would hope that that is obeyed because there's a an, we, this is retrospective, I think, and uh, people ignore timescales, and that should not be allowed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Creever. That totally. Um, do we have anybody else? Okay, we're going to move on. So we're coming to a vote here. All those in favour of the officer's recommendation to grant permission, please raise your hand. Two, Chairman. Those against? Ten, Chairman. And those abstaining? Two, Chairman. In which case, we need a motion now to refuse and go against the officer's recommendation. Chairman, I think I outlined reasons before in terms of visual amenity, um, uh, compliance with the street scene, uh, and actually I think that contributes to residential amenity and has an effect on the design. Great. Okay, we're going to second for that. that Councillor Amos seconds. So, can we have a vote for the... Motion to go against the council's recommendation. Eleven. And those against that? Zero. Those abstaining? Two. Okay, so that recommendation is refused. Um, Chairman, can I, there has been a an issue with the webcast. Um, it's not with Zoom, which is still operating in the background. Um, and therefore, there's going to be some difficulty doing the presentation. Um, can you reconnect, Natalie? And I've seen Nat Natalie looking in the background there, frantically trying to text people. Um, have, have you got the presentation, Graham? Uh, well, I mean, there's a, there's a few options here. Um, I mean, obviously, we can uh, have a short break. We want to see if we can sort this out. Uh, we could defer the item. But actually, uh, luckily, the next item is uh, an application about opening hours. There are three slides in the presentation, which is the, uh, the, 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 front, <laughs> the front sheet, which I just thank the chairman, uh, a copy of the site plan and a photograph of the site. Um, I don't actually think 
members will be missing out if I don't show those. I can simply read the presentation as is, uh, but it's up to members as to whether they feel comfortable making the decision uh, without the visual presentation. But I can assure you there isn't a lot in the visual presentation because it is a, a, an application on opening hours. Okay. Um, Excuse me. Greg, can, can you use uh, Google Earth to show the... Nothing can access the property. Oh, you might even go there. there. I can't have anything from there. Not even from here. No, okay. Fine, okay, so... Councillor Philip would like to say something. Uh, Chairman, as one of the ward councillors, I, I think the vast majority of the committee have been in Theden Voice and seen uh, the, the location either in its... Uh, incarnation as Bonamy or its previous incarnation as Belgique. So I think people are familiar with the site and I'd be happy given the description of the slides that uh, Ms. Courtney gave for us to go ahead with that without it being shown on the screen. Okay, I agree with that. Anybody else got anything to say about that point? No, so let's go ahead without the presentations uh, visuals. Okay, well, thank you, Chair. Um, so this next application uh, is for a proposed change in operating hours uh, from 8am to 6pm to 8am until 10pm, so it's uh, uh, to open later in the evening. Uh, the application is before committee as there is an objection from the parish council and two neighbours with regards to noise and disturbance. Uh, the application site is a ground floor cafe with accommodation above, it is situated within the designated local centre uh, in Faden Boys. The purpose of the extension of the hours is to increase business and meet existing costs. The nature of the business is uh, not intending to change. The planning system should seek to help build in flexibility for businesses uh, and encourage their continued use. Uh, however, the main concern with the proposal is the potential noise nuisance, particularly to the residents uh, the residential uses on the upper levels. It must be recognised that the application site is situated within a designated centre. There are also other premises within this small centre that open until 10.30 and 11 o'clock. That also need to be given due consideration. Subject to conditions that control any potential noise nuisance, it is considered that the proposed elongated opening hours are acceptable. A licence has recently been granted for the proposed opening hours. This includes a restriction on the use of the forecourt beyond, oh sorry, of, on a restriction of no use of the forecourt uh, beyond 9 p.m. Uh, and is, it is suggested that a similar condition be imposed here. A further condition is recommended to control the noise level of any amplified sound equipment installed, which would also assist in mitigating any current nuisance experienced from music being played. Subject to the suggested conditions, it is recommended that the application is approved. Over to you, members. Thank you, Graham. Sorry, Chair, just to say, I don't know how this happened, but we're back on the screen if you did want to share. I'm not taking any credit for that. <laughs> um, Graham, if you wanted to share anything, you yes, should, should be work. able to now. I will share, um, even if it's just to, to, to prove what I was saying, in that uh, the three slides we had were uh, this one, uh, this one, which shows the location. So this is the site here uh, within Faden Woods, as Councillor Flip uh, says. I'm sure members are probably aware of this site. Uh, and here is a... Um, I'm not sure how recent this, uh, this photograph is, actually. It's a, it's a Google Street View photograph uh, of the site. And that's it. That's the presentation, hence why uh, I don't think it was no. too essential that we lost that. Thank you. OK, thank you, Graham. Uh, we have a speaker, Mr Peter Gooch, from Faden Boys Parish Council. Three minutes, please, Peter. <coughs> thank you, Chairman. Um, the Parish Council doesn't have a concern over the hours as such. Um, the issue has always been the use of the outside uh, pavement um, those of you who will be familiar with Thaden is that on the east side of Forest Drive, uh, none of the shops open after 6.30. Uh, so this will be the only shop. Um, and we have a dark skies policy. So it's a quiet ambience and it's dark as well. So the use of the outside will be um, obviously um, conspicuous. Uh, our concern also uh, was driven by some previous issues with uh, one of the other restaurants, uh, Il Baccio, uh, which is in Forest Drive in the corner, 
uh, where we had, they did initially were allowed to have outside tables. Um, that caused a lot of nuisance, led to enforcement action, and now they are banned from using the outside um, premises, uh, outside forecourt uh, at all. So of the restaurants in Thoden Boys, there are no one who, who uses the, uh, out, this will be the only premises. Um, I was present at the uh, licensing uh, subcommittee. Um, the parish council's preference would be to limit the use of the outside to seven o'clock. However, the licensing um, subcommittee decided on nine o'clock uh, 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 as, as a compromise, and clearly the planning officer wants to come in line uh, with that. Uh, if that is to be the case, then um, we would just like to um, modify the conditions somewhat. Uh, I think in the condition, the planning officer talks about um, uh, the, 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 the stopping of serving of food and consumption of food. Uh, in the conditions on the licensing committee, it said the area should not be used at all after 21 hours, so it should be clear. So what we're not looking for is people sitting out there, you know, up to 10 o'clock or whatever, talking, even though they might be. It should be cleared at, uh, at uh, 9 o'clock. Um, so we'd like to, that, that to be reflected in the condition. Um, the, other, the other condition was that uh, at the licensing subcommittee, the applicant said there would be no additional lighting uh, at all. Um, the lighting of the area would be from the light coming through the glass uh, frontage uh, windows. Uh, as he said that, we would like that to be conditioned to ensure that there are no additional lighting put on the, uh, on the use of the outside uh, forecourt. But in terms of the hours uh, inside, then we had no issues with 10 o'clock. It's purely the use of the outside area. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and just for the avoidance of doubt, I haven't, I haven't discussed this application with Councillor Gooch before this, but uh, uh, it seems our minds are working in significantly similar ways. Um, I, I certainly think that given the location of, w of this building within Thaden Boys, uh, we should condition, just to be explicit, that no additional lighting on the outside is permitted. Uh, I was actually going to make, make one other proposal of change to condition three, uh, I think probably if, if we uh, limit the outside use until 8 o'clock, given that we have uh, a significant number of young people who live around there, 8 o'clock seems a good balance between uh, going into the evening but not disturbing the peace of people, where, uh, people around there. I'm sure other members have been walking down Forest Drive in the evening, either going into one of the restaurants or coming out of one of the restaurants. Um, but we really passed about six o'clock, seven o'clock, as Councillor Gooch said, it is a very quiet stretch of street. However, I'm fully in support of the change in opening hours for Bonhomie. I do like the condition number four, which uh, limits the amplified music, because that would clearly stop any amplified music outside. But if we make it eight o'clock and take on board what Councillor Gooch said in terms of uh, stopping use, so perhaps we could condition that no food and drink can be served after eight o'clock and the forecourt has to be clear by nine. That's a good balance um, in, in the use there so that people can finish eating and sit around for a while before they go, but it doesn't stop the business. And we have to remember that uh, Bonamy is a fairly large uh, establishment, so the 10 or so seats outside aren't going to make a significant difference so I'd like to stop food and drink at 8 o'clock, have the outside space clear before by, by 9, and add the condition that says no additional lighting is permitted as a result of this. No, no additional lighting outside. Uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's not my place to agree. It's for um, it would be a vote for members uh, to agree but that. Can it fit um, in uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we can change those. Interestingly, um, officers were originally uh, more restrictive on the outdoor space. I think we were suggesting that should shut at six o'clock, and it was only after we saw the license uh, application that we changed it to nine o'clock. So actually, we're if anything, we were more restrictive than everybody else here um, initially. But um, yeah, no, I think that makes perfect sense, as, as Councillor Phillips says. 
no food or drink served after eight and then fully cleared by nine uh, with the other conditions. Yep, yeah, they can all be, be changed, but uh, I, I suspect you may have to take a, a vote, uh, get that seconded and take a vote on that. If it reassures Mr Courtney, I started off by thinking of six as well, but wanting to support a local business and looking at the general impact that it would have, I think it's reasonable. Um, I was originally going to say that it should shut at uh, sunset or six o'clock, whichever is earlier, but I I'm happy to leave it at eight o'clock because people probably won't sit outside in January at eight o'clock at night. I would also uh, strongly recommend we don't use stuff like that because it's a nightmare to enforce <laughs> as to when sunset is. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Beth. Yeah, just wanted to second that proposal. I think that's a reasonable compromise. Councillor Brady. Sorry, on that then, can I, I'm, I'm getting very confused. Could, could Councillor Philip explain to me, are you talking about... You want food and, when you say you want food and drink to stop at eight o'clock, do you just mean for the few tables outside? Oh, okay, okay, thank you. And, oh, and can I ask the planning officer while, while I'm on? Um, this thing about extra lighting, I can see some bemused faces over there. What constitutes extra lighting? Can they have a candle on their table? So that people, because the last time this came up, at, I don't know if it was this premises or somewhere else, they were all talking about tripping over a low, dark wall or something in Thaden Boys. So are they allowed candles on tables or literally nothing? Because, you know, it sounds very extreme. Well, um, I mean, it was, a, it was a condition that's just been suggested, so I haven't, I haven't had real, real time to, to, to determine the ins and outs of how that, that could work. Um, I suppose theoretically, any if if the wording was that no additional lighting, then yeah, that could include candles. Um, maybe we should say no additional fixed lighting. Um, that may yeah. be clearer and easier. Um, I'm just going to point out as well, Councillor Amos has put his hand up for a little while. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, uh, thank you, Chairman. Most of what I was going to say has already been said, but uh, I would certainly also like to endorse uh, Councillor Phillips' proposal that it be eight o'clock for food and drink is ceased to be served outside, and uh, also the proposal for no additional lighting. Uh, I would I would certainly endorse that. I can say that uh, Bonamy reopened today after a month's of refurbishment and. Uh, I, there certainly at this stage is no indication that additional lighting has been installed outside. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Bolton. Can I just clarify, if you have a curfew on diners outside, does that also include the amenities such as tables and chairs? And if that's the case, is it practical to expect those to be removed at 8 o'clock away from... I mean, it's the objection. It's partly to do with people and it's partly to do with tables and chairs. And that, can they be removed? Yeah. Councillor Phil. Sorry. I believe, having glanced briefly at the licensing panel, that the licensing uh, panel requ required that the tables and chairs be taken inside. Uh, at the end of the evening, not left out overnight. Um, I'm not uh, by saying, by saying, finishing serving food, food and drink being served or consumed by eight o'clock. The idea to leave it to nine o'clock means that you do not have to clear the tables and chairs at that point. But the stopping of the use of that should mean, hopefully, that that, that clearing uh, lines up with what the licensing panel said, and we don't end up with uh, clattering and crashing of tables and chairs at gone 10 o'clock at night, because that will cause a, a disturbance. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. So I think we uh, come to a vote now on the motion um, put forward by Councillor Philip to include those three uh, conditions. It is three, is it? Three conditions. The lighting, the limiting to 8 o'clock and the table's cleared by 9 o'clock and no additional lighting, fixed lighting. Okay, so those in favour of that motion? Unanimous, Chair. Against? Unanimous. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. So, I think we voted for the. Uh, we have actually voted for the motion and to agree. Grant. So, with those conditions, that application has been granted. No, no, no. It hasn't. Not yet. We need to have a proper form word, yeah. Okay, so now we come to the vote, um, which you're already putting your hands up for, which is to agree with the officer's recommendation to grant. Unanimous, Chairman. Okay. Okay. Um, where are we going to go? Right, item 30, exclusion of the public and press, nothing. And I think, I think that's it. That's it. You need to close the meeting. Hmm? Just close the meeting. Got a meeting. No, you need to close the meeting. Oh, I know that. I just don't know if you've got that meeting. Okay, everybody, it's uh, time to close the meeting, and the time is 26 minutes past eight.